Lisa Curly Malice, your time strategy visionary, talking about the emotional cost of making a change. I've recently been reading the 12 week year. And in this book, the authors talk about the emotional cost of making change. And they reference work by two psychologists. And what they say is that we go through like a bell curve where at the very beginning, we don't know what we don't know. And so we have no idea how tough it could be to make the change. So we're optimistic, we're excited, we see all the possibilities because that's all we know. Then we start making the change and all of a sudden it gets a little tougher because we're no longer in that I don't know what I don't know stage. We've moved on to the next phase where all of a sudden we're beginning to see, wow, making change is tough <laughs> and it's going to require some work and I'm going to have to do some things that I didn't anticipate I might need to do at the beginning. And so now our emotions dip a little bit because that excitement, that high of look at what's possible, starting to wear away a little bit. Then we move into what the authors call the valley of despair, where we've definitely tipped the scales to where change is hard, <laughs> is a much bigger than look at the possibilities and look at what can happen. And you this is the area where because your emotions are kind of beat up a little bit, you start to justify why you might not want to continue forward. Well, maybe things weren't that bad before. You know, this is a lot, of, this is hard work and a lot of stuff and I really don't have time for it or energy for it or money for it. So it's okay to go back to where things were. The authors say that this is typically when people stop working towards making a change. Because in the valley of despair, this is where your emotions are, um, po the positive emotions are the lowest, your negative emotions are the highest, and you're thinking, I can't do this. If you, but knowing the cycle will help you know that if you can just push through this part, the rest becomes a lot easier. Because the next phase, according to the authors, is when you start to see some progress you start to recognize, hey, I, I am, this change is happening. It's not all the time, it's, and it's not easy, but I'm seeing progress. And again, now your emotions, the positive emotions start to go up because you're seeing progress and you can kind of see that the end is near, whatever that goal may be or the change you're trying to make is. So finally you get to the last phase and here is where uh, this habit, this change, the new activity that you're doing becomes almost automatic and easy. And at this point, it's a great time to try a new project, a new habit, a new something, something new that you want to change because you've hit the part where, yay, you're on a roll, this is great, you've got momentum, go ahead and flip back and start back over again. For me, the piece of this that was most telling was the fact that there is a place where you are at your lowest, and this is typically when people quit. Yet, you're right, right by the part where it starts to get easier, if you can just hold on and push through long enough. Lisa Curly Malice, your time strategy visionary, wishing you a productive, rewarding, and fun day. I invite you, what do you think about the, emo the emotional cycle of change? Leave your comments below.